Hi, this is Dan at Fontspring talking about style linking. I get a lot of requests from customers wondering uh, if style linking works, if they should be using it, and how reliable it is. And honestly, I have to double back a little bit and make sure I'm right. There's been a lot of confusion about style linking in the past and whether it works reliably or not, and rightfully so because uh, some of the older versions of IE really threw fits. So what I did is I whipped up this demo that that allows you to test it in different browsers and um, it also allows you to see my code and, and see exactly how I'm doing it. Um, so you can get up to speed on style linking and, and really understand what it offers you. The trick to this demo is that I edited the web fonts that we're going to use and I replaced the plus sign with a unique glyph that can really help us see what style it is. So this used to be the plus sign and I replaced it with 900 indicating that that this is actually the 900 weight of the font. Italic versions I did the same exact thing only I added a little I after it. I'm using this uh, software called OT Master. I added a link to it in the bottom of the site here um, and you can check them out. They're really helpful. Uh, they have a free version and a paid version. Um, you're having trouble and if you need to uh, to make changes very nice software um, so take a look at that um, so so I edited those glyphs and if you go to our demos this is actually the plus sign and anytime the fonts loaded it's gonna show you and the the weight and style of the font so this gives you very definitive indications of which which font is being loaded so for example if if we thought this was Museo Slab 700, but it was really just a fake bold of 500, this would say 500 and this would say 500i. And the way this works is you reset all your browser defaults, so your H tags are going to be normal. The browser would normally bold them, but we need to set them to normal to make sure uh, that everything looks how we want it, that there's no fake bolds being applied. And then all of our CSS is set to normal, and each style has its own family name. The advantage here is you have precise control over old IE browsers, and there's no question. But your your markup is going to be really cumbersome. You can see here this is my CSS just for this little page and you know the other disadvantage because everything got reset to normal um, when you break your web fonts uh, you lose all your styling. Uh, none of your headers are, are bold or anything like that. Uh, you know this was supposed to be italic so each page has this button to break them so you can test it out. So it doesn't degrade well and your markup is really cumbersome. At the very least you want to use some basic style linking. Uh, you use some uh, common family names in your CSS um, and then you know link up the right file to the italic versions. And then also uh, you know these are set to font weight normal um, and then when you get up in the bold range you just start calling it font weight bold and what this allows you to do is when you break the break them you're actually going to get a bold version for some of the bolder fonts and um, so you don't get perfect control but it does degrade while well. your headers are still bolded um, and you still get your italics uh, the markups a little cleaner as you can see but it's still not great at the you know you you should probably uh, plan on using um, some some more advanced style linking and I called this traditional style linking what this does is use one family name uh, and you can use up to four different uh, styles in each family um, your normal non-italic your normal italic your bold non-italic and then your bold italic and this does work in IE 8 and lower as well you can see here the actual fonts are being loaded. Um, however, your internal uh, data in the font have to match what you're trying to uh, accomplish. So if you want this to be a normal non-italic font, the internals are going to have to say, yes, it's regular, and no, it's italic. Um, 
uh, so that's only IE8 and lower. Uh, in IE9, it doesn't matter. And, and I built a test right here that actually shows that. Uh, so here's IE9, and um, I'll jump down to the bottom here. So I, I mixed up the internals of the font. And what you can see happening is that it actually works in IE9. It, it ignores all the internals, and it loaded the exact font that I wanted. Um, I said that this was a normal weight and a non-italic font, but I called the italic bold font. And so in IE9 it works. Now you, w you wouldn't want to actually do this because then uh, if the fonts broke, uh, it would load the uh, default font and it'd get them all mixed up. Um, we can actually do that and show you. So now, you know, this was supposed to be a bold italic. That's what you wanted it to look like. And when, you, when the fonts break, uh, instead you're getting a normal uh, non-italic version. Now in IE8, uh, we'll take a look at that test and see that it didn't work. Instead, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. IE8 goes down uh, and it, it it finds all the fonts in the family, and then it actually finds the first one it can find that has the right data, and loaded that instead. Um, so we said we wanted a normal weight, non-italic, and it found the correct font that it thought was correct, even though you wanted the bold italic font to load. So uh, so screwing things up doesn't degrade well, um, but but once you get into IE9 it's very forgiving if your fonts, if the internal data of the fonts are not correct um, um, it's fine. And I also tried a couple other things. I mixed up the family names so here I used a, even a different font, completely different data. Uh, I wanted Steelfish Bold to load and it did uh, and bold italic to load. Um, you again, you really wouldn't want to do this. Um, this was just for testing. And here I I mixed everything up. The internal data and the family names are all screwed up. It still loaded the fonts that I wanted it to load. IE9 is very forgiving. IE8 you're going to get some mixed results if your if your internal data isn't right. So that's traditional style linking. It does work. Um, another thing that I added was uh, uh, some people um, used to use lighter and bolder, and um, I got very mixed results. I went ahead and added this just so you could play around with it, but, um, but I would not use those styles in your CSS. You get very erratic uh, results when you're using it. Now, numeric style linking is really, uh, is really the way to go here. Um, uh, all browsers support it. It gives you the most flexibility and the cleanest markup. You can see how nice and clean my markup is. I just call the the family uh, as little as one time. You know, just style the whole body uh, with Museo Slab, and then um, you can change the font weights uh, for each individual class or um, element. We're giving it one family name for everything, and then uh, changing the font weight and the style. So essentially you're getting up to 18 different styles, 100 to 900 in increments of 100, and your italic versions as well. You're getting bold for, for the 700s and ups. It's you know not as much variation as you wanted, and then everything below that is getting normal. And we'll jump over to IE8 and take a look at that as well. Um, as you can see, it doesn't work in IE8. Uh, so if you're using numeric style, style linking, you're going to want to make sure that a small group of people are using IE 8 or lower. Um, but it doesn't look bad either. You're at least getting your, your bold versions um, for your headers and things like that. And, um, and everything else is normal. Your italics are working and things like that. So the conclusion here is uh, if... Uh, unless you're targeting IE8 heavily, um, I would uh, get into the habit of using numeric style linking. And um, it has a lot to offer, very clean markup. And um, you can combine numeric with uh, some traditional uh, terminology. So um, 400 is normal. 
Um, so you can uh, jump back and forth between those and, and browsers recognize it. I did add this, uh, this extra little demo here that shows you that. So thanks for watching. I really hope this video was valuable to you. Remember, not all font licenses are created equal. Don't buy your fonts elsewhere and regret it later. Buy your fonts from Fontspring with confidence.